So, we now come to the final part of the spiral, which is evaluate. Now, I am especially elated about evaluate because evaluate, as the word suggests, tells you to look at your idea from a, from a finality point of view. Shape the idea, it's called, right? Shaping the idea. So now, what is evaluate? You know what is evaluate, you know, to, to test something. But that's not, it's not so easy as that. At the same time, it, you know, remember I used the word deliberate at one point of time. When you say deliberate creativity means planning your creativity. So can you start to understand how challenging, how much fun, at the same time, how much hard work creativity is, right? Because creativity, I'm hoping that all of us have started to understand creativity is not just about generating ideas. It's so easy to generate ideas, right? But it's not all. You can't, you can't create an entire institution only with an idea. An idea needs to be implemented. Before implementation, it needs to be evaluated. It needs to be evaluated. It needs to be tested. So for the next 10 to 15 minutes, we will be speaking about evaluating the solution. Please pay attention, please, because this is going to be useful to you, not only for biomimicry, but for almost everything that you design in your life. So evaluate means, how can my solution be applied in the real world? Now, this is what it is all about, right? It's all about you can do whatever you want in your in your in your workplace or on your on your laptop but ultimately if you want to if you want to really use creativity you must use it in the real world and that is what you get paid for how can you use your ideas in the real world what are the barriers and the constraints once you know what are the problems and the constraints about your idea you can start to Look after those constraints and barriers. Before that, therefore, you must be very, very, let's say, very not very attached to your idea right now. Many people are so attached to their ideas that they are blind to the barriers and constraints. You can't be doing that because for you, it's not about being in love with your ideas. It's about making your ideas work. Look at this. Now, this, you know, this, I have about five or six slides. All of them are questions. And these questions are powerful because these questions help you evaluate your idea. So look at, look at the question number one. How well does it meet the criteria and constraints that you identified during Define? So during Define, you said, these are the things, the context, this is the constraint. How well does your final solution meet that constraint? You must ask yourself that question. Look at your Define. Look at what you did in Define. Look at your solutions. Find out if they match. How well does it meet nature's design? This is, these are the two important things. Nature's design principles. You're going to be learning in the next two classes about the nature's design principles where nature designs, the way nature designs. And therefore, the nat nature has those 10 design principles. And has, has your, has, are you looking after, are you looking after nature's design principles when you are designing? Or you're simply making something that's going to destroy nature. You don't want to do that, right? Revisit the earlier steps. So, this, this, so it's an iterate. So for instance, when you're, when you're coming to evaluate and you find that you need to look at one more organism, go and look at one more organism. And that is what is called iteration. Also look at the technical feasibility. If you are, if you are, uh, if your idea, if your idea is so futuristic that it cannot happen over the next hundred years, then it's not a good idea to do it right now, right? So look at the technical feasibility. Look at the business model. Find out if if the idea is feasible from a business model point of view. Find out if it's going to be accepted as a as a business model at all, right? What is the environmental uh, environmental problems about the idea? If your idea is going to cause huge environmental damage, it's not a good idea. What is the social impact? Will it be accepted socially? Will people be able to accept it easily? 
Is there a cultural problem in the idea that people will not accept it? So these are the things you do for evaluate. Evaluate is shown in the last step, but several times you have to have the evaluate. You have, you have to have what is called an evaluating mind all the time, like a monitor, right? A monitor in a classroom. What does she do? She constantly monitors the class. So evaluate can be your monitor. From when you're doing all the processes, keep evaluate at the back of your mind so that it's it's not a judge of your ideas. Remember, you don't judge your ideas. It's simply that test your idea. Tell yourself that I need to test my idea. So over a period of time, over a period of time, at some point of time, you will have to test your idea, prototype your idea, get feedback from the users and all that. Right. So now we are talking about we are talking about feasibility of the idea. How do you assess the feasibility? The feasibility means can the idea work? What does it take to make the idea work? Feasibility would be what would be the potential gains from your idea? What would be the potential gains? What are the other systems that you need to interact with? For instance. Uh, the governmental system, the social system, the 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 international um, you know international society whatever system. So, what are the other systems that your idea will have to interact with? What are the potential gains from your solutions? What is it that your that that people will gain, society will gain, technology will gain from your ideas? What are the possible pains? What are the problems in your idea? We will come to each of this in detail as we go along. How do you test the solution? Will you make a small prototype? Will you will you build a model? Will you will you write a prototype on a piece of paper and show it to? How, how will you actually test the prototype? Test the solution. How will you get feedback from users? For instance, your idea will have to be used by people, right? If you if you if you make if you make fabric uh, from the lotus leaf technology, from the way the lotus leaf um, you know washes away uh, dirt. If you make fabric from that, it's a great idea. But how will you get feedback? Will people actually use it? Will people actually use that fabric? What will prevent them from using it? What will excite them about that product? So getting user feedback. One of the main things in entrepreneurship, right? When, when we teach entrepreneurship, what do we do? We say entrepreneurship is not just your great idea. It's also about getting user feedback. Actually, in one of the programs that we did, we recommended that you meet 100 customers before you actually say this is a good idea. 100 customers. And out of 100 customers, if 70 or 80 customers say it's a very good idea, then there is chance for the idea to succeed. So many times we make ideas, make ideas, make ideas, make solutions without bothering about what the customer really wants. And there's a huge mismatch about the solution that you have and what the customer really wants. Does your solution meet nature's design principles? Keep on coming back to that, right? Because nature's design principles, those 10 principles are at the heart of design. Because when nature, nature makes design, she sees to it that she does not harm the environment. What is the use of doing biomimicry when your design is actually going to cause harm to the environment? So now we are going to look at each of those feasibility uh, points in detail. So how do you assess the need? Is there a need at all for this design? Or is it so futuristic or so, so uh, non-relevant that there's no need for this design? How does the idea impact the stakeholder? Who are the stakeholders to the idea? There are several stakeholders, right? For instance, if you're building a road, there are so many stakeholders. There is the village through which the road is going. There is the contractor. There is the government. There are rules. There are motorists. There are so many stakeholders. So when you're making the road, you need to consider the needs of all these stakeholders. You can't just build a road through a village and say, this is my road. This is how I will build it. So how does it impact different stakeholders? First and foremost, who are the stakeholders? How are the stakeholders going to react to this new idea? Some of them may reject the idea totally. Some of them say, no, 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 it doesn't fit our cultural context. How is it going to? So I'm not saying, see, don't, don't be disheartened by this. It's not as if 
your idea will not work. I'm just saying that if your idea really has to work, these are all the things that you must consider. Because many times, many times we are so quick with our ideas that we don't consider this. And later on, we blame every, we blame ourselves and we blame the system saying, nobody is listening to my ideas. That's not the way you go about it. You have to do a thorough job of your ideas in Evaluate. What will take for the stakeholders to accept my idea? So if I listen to the stakeholders, stakeholders may say, you know what, if this road cannot go through, through that particular part in the village, if you can deviate the road a little, it will be nice for us. And what have they done? They have accepted your idea of the road in the village, but they are saying, please make some changes. Gains. What is the meaning of gain? A gain is something that makes the customer happy, right? Makes the person happy. So what is the what is the gain? What is it that you can you can give by way of gain to the person who, who is going to use your idea? How does the idea successfully solve the problem of that person? So I'll go back to the fabric problem, right? How does it solve the problem? Maybe, maybe the, the mother or um, the, the person who is washing the clothes will say, oh, wow, it's a nice gain for me. I don't have to wash my children's clothes every day. So that's a gain for her. How does the solution benefit stakeholders? Almost similar to the previous point. What is the biggest advantage of this idea? Sometimes what happens, the, the, the big, big, big benefit from an idea overshadows all the small, small problems about the idea. So is there a huge benefit in this idea that you can use in order to make the other idea, other problems mean, seem smaller? What does success look like? This is a great visualization exercise, right? So can you visualize your idea and if everybody is applauding your idea, what, is it, what does it look like when it's implemented? So assessing gains. What are the pains? Look, look at the detail. Okay, look at the detail. You don't have to do it right away. It's important. It's a reference slide for you. It's a reference slide for you when you're doing that big, big task, when you're talking, when you're making this big presentation about your idea, when your idea is going to be assessed by a lot of people and there are a lot of stakes involved. That is the time you reference this slide. And that's the time you'll be grateful that this slide is there because this slide is so comprehensive. These slides are so comprehensive that they help you flesh out your idea completely. Are there any downsides to the idea? What can, get, what can go wrong about your ideas? Is there any unintended consequence? You know the meaning of unintended consequence, right? Unintended consequence means a, a consequence that you never expected to happen. And there is a very, love, uh, there's a very beautiful system thinking habit called looking at unintended consequences, short term, long term, unintended consequences. What are the fears that stakeholders? So supposing you, you make this fabric uh, um, designed, on the low, uh, designed after the lotus leaf, what are the fears? Is it going to be too expensive, right? Um, will, 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 there, will the dirt still be sticking into the, in the cloth? But, and so will, will it cause an infection to, to the person wearing it? What obstacles could prevent? What are the problems of the idea? What could prevent? So who, the obstacle could be a competitor to, to make your idea successful. Could be a cost, right? What untested assumptions? What have you not tested yet? And what are the constraints that you have not met yet? So these are assessing the pains. Assessing gains, assessing pains. And then how do you address the pains? Once you've assessed the pains, once you looked at all the pains, you have to address the pains, right? So ask yourself, is this pain a real pain or simply some fear, some emotional fear? Is there any way that you can prevent this pain at all? How can you make this pain into a gain? How can you turn the pain around and make it into a gain? And which stakeholders are expected? or experts can we talk to. Sometimes what happens when we create an idea, we, we don't have enough expertise on the idea. So who can we speak to? Now we have something called a checklist. It's called the Nature's Unifying Factor Design Checklist. You can look at that link. I'm just going to give you a sample of it. The sample is, look at this. What is this? Nature uses only the energy it needs and relies on freely available energy. 
it is a one of the design principles and the checklist supposing you are making some design you are making the fabric right you evaluate you evaluate your design against this checklist this checklist is available in that link i am just giving you a sample the sample is one of the principles which is nature uses only the energy it needs and relies on freely available energy so what are the things that you need to look out for can you manufacture locally yes or no yes because it relates to nature uses only the energy can you incentivize user shifts can you incentivize yes or no yes can you build on existing code tools or templates so that you don't waste too much energy yes or no yes can you leverage the community can you help the community grow can you make use of the community yes are you utilizing networks and experts to your advantage yes or no yes so this is the checklist for the idea so keep your idea in front of you keep the nature's unifying pattern in front of you use the checklist to evaluate your idea against the unifying patterns of nature so identify next steps this slide talks about what are the steps you will take for 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 instance what, what is the meaning of next steps what are the things that you will do so you will you will you will probably speak to some experts so you will say i'll speak to the following experts next steps then you will say i will do the prototyping then you will identify a lab for the prototyping you will find out how much it costs and then you will actually do the prototyping or model some of you may want to file an ip right so therefore you will visit the local ip office and find out how to file an ip some of you may want to give this idea to a group of entrepreneurs to develop the idea whatever it is identify the next steps once you have done all the evaluation identify your next steps is what we are talking about don't simply you know rest on your laurels and say i have created the idea that's not enough because we want your ideas we want your ideas after you have done evaluation it be a complete waste of time if you are going to keep the idea locked up in a cupboard right your idea has to see the light of day people will have to come and use your idea you may want to make some money with that idea so therefore it's important to identify i have done all the processes that i have learned i have done all the steps in the biomimicry spiral i have evaluated the idea completely yes there are one or two problems in the idea but that's okay and this is my final idea now these are the next steps so having the confidence having the confidence that the idea is going to work and your idea is going to solve you know the whole point is the united nations sustainable development goals the problem that you came out with i have used i have been inspired by nature and i have used the 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 technology the strategies of nature i have done all this work after doing all this work i don't want to lock it up in a cupboard i want to have the next steps and the next steps could determine how powerful how wonderful how useful your idea can be